All right, guys, what's going on? We are live. I am so excited to talk to you guys today and answer one of the most commonly asked questions that we get about creative real estate investing. And that question is, how do I know what offer to make to a motivated seller so that way I can guarantee or lock in a profit throughout the negotiations? Now, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Cody Sperber. I'm known as the Clever Investor. And uh, we actually have a formula that we've been using for years. Now, I've flipped over a thousand houses. I've been very blessed in this business to meet some of the, the biggest real estate entrepreneurs and just superstars in this business and mentors that have taught me a lot of really great things. I've been doing this for over a decade and I've sat down at thousands of kitchen tables just negotiating back and forth and all that experience has taught me the uh, positive way to influence others and create these win-win deals that you can walk away from. They're profitable deals. You can walk away from them. Everybody ends up getting what they want in the transaction. And this has been one of the, the best uh, ways that I've used as a baseline when I go into those negotiations. And I want to share it with you on this video. Now, if you're brand new, you've never done a real estate deal before. You, you might have been watching TV shows and you've been saying to yourself, man, I'd, I'd like to flip some houses. I'd like to get into that business. Uh, I remember what it's like to be brand new. I didn't have any money when I first started. I didn't have any real estate connections. I didn't have any resources. I was actually uh, pretty, you know, I was a young kid. I was broke. So I remember what it's like when, and this is pre-YouTube, pre-social media, and uh, there wasn't a lot of information online that, that can teach you uh, things like what we're about to talk about on this video. And so, uh, I, it felt like I, every time I went to seminars or boot camps or uh, went to meetup groups, those kind of things, it felt like I was drinking from a fire hose. I was that guy that bought every course and book and tape out, out there imaginable. And I was digesting all this information and it felt like information overload, almost to the point where I, I couldn't even, as an analytical type of guy, I couldn't even get going and get moving forward. So I know what it's like to be brand new feel overwhelmed, that's totally normal, and my goal in this video is to take something that can feel overwhelming like sitting down and negotiating with somebody, take that complicated process and distill it down into something really simple. And that's where the maximum allowable offer formula comes into play. Now, we started using this to just give us a guide when we're walking into the negotiations, to give us a guide to, that way we kind of have a baseline and, and, and a goal to shoot for. Now, if you're more experienced and maybe you've been rehabbing houses or you're a professional landlord, this formula is an acquisition tool. For me, I, I started with nothing. So I had to get creative with my real estate investing. And so I leaned toward this concept called wholesaling or quick flipping when I first started. And it's essentially the concept of going out and finding a motivated seller, negotiating with them and putting their property under contract using, our, you know, using some negotiation strategies, locking the house up with some paperwork. I haven't bought it yet, I just put it under contract. Then turned around and found a cash buyer that was either a landlord or rehabber that was actually looking for a good deal and playing matchmaker between the two. And that process of pairing people up and earning a wholesale fee that's called quick flipping, and you could do that without a real estate license. So when I discovered this creative world of real estate investing, uh, I got really excited because I said, man, I could do that. That's something that, that I could go out and do because I have a lot of time. I have a lot of energy. I just didn't have a lot of money or resources. So I lean towards wholesaling. And as you go out and start your negotiating with sellers and things like that, something like this really becomes valuable. So with that said, MAO stands for Maximum Allowable Offer, and essentially what it is, is um, when you're out sourcing deals, you got to kind of think of the deal from your back-end buyer's point of view. So who are our back-end buyers? They are rehabbers or landlords. Now, investors who have a lot of cash but don't have a lot of time to go source deals, they believe that their cash is extremely valuable, right? Because we all know, you know, cash is king. So if you have your cash, you have a big bucket of money, 
and there's all these investment opportunities in your area that they're potentially looking to buy or invest in, they're going to say to themselves, this is, you know, I got to pick the right investment property. And we've all heard the phrase, you make money when you buy. So from their point of view, they're like, man, I got to buy it right to get into the deal the right way. So if we look at any potential deal that we want to wholesale from our back end cash buyers point of view, we can set the transaction up for success right from the beginning. And that's where MAO comes in. So there's a couple of key pieces that we need to either estimate or uh, come up with in order to plug it into the formula and run our MAO. Now, with that said, guys, math scares me. You know, I, I was never good at math. I always kind of like just blanked out and uh, if it gets too complicated, I'm out, right? And so don't get overwhelmed by this formula. It's actually quite simple. Our goal is to, the, the reason we call it maximum allowable offer, the concept is, could we, as we're working with the motivated seller, could we gather information from them through our phone conversations and get certain key critical pieces of information from them? So uh, one thing, one piece of information that we want to know, okay, is what seller wants. All right? So if we can ask them questions that pull out of them what they want, really it's what they need. Um, in order to do it, any type of real estate deal where you're gonna buy it at a discount on the front end, we're really talking to the word motivated, right? We're, we're looking for people that are motivated. So motivated sellers. They become motivated for a lot of reasons. So maybe they're going through a divorce, they had a death in the family, inherited an unwanted property, maybe they uh, uh, are tired of being a landlord, they're being relocated, they were fired, medical issues, foundation issues, fire damage, flood damage, ugly house on the block. There are so many reasons that they could wake up one day and find themselves motivated. So in order to do a deal, they need to have motivation and equity. Okay, these are like the, the pre-qualifiers. So we need to find out what the seller wants and it's really what they need because they're motivated, right? Another good thing to understand would be how much they owe. Oh man, am I right? How much they owe. All right, if we're talking to them and we can uncover how much they owe, um, and the way I do that, just so you guys know, I, I kind of like to do an O oh, by the way, because if you start asking personal information, it's real easy to say, hey, listen, um, after talking with me for a while, obviously you can see that I'm, I'm a pretty good guy and there's a lot of benefits of working with an investor like me. If I was to write you a check today, what would you like to get? So that the what do they need conversation is pretty easy. The how much do they owe can get a little tricky. And a lot of times what happens um, uh, you ask them what, you know, do you have a mortgage on your property? How much do you owe? And the walls go up, right? They're like, Ugh, that's a little personal. And especially if it's on the first phone call, they don't want to share that information. So I like to do an, oh, by the way, and this is just a little side trick, uh, that you can start using right away. That's going to make a big difference in your progress on this first phone call. I like to end the call by, and, and normally I'm about 15 minutes in, I've already started building rapport and I've uncovered how much they want and why they're selling. And I've done, I've done a couple steps there to really set up this first phone call for success. And then I do something like, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I really appreciate you giving me an opportunity to earn your business here today. I got everything that I need to put some pen to paper and really start crafting an offer that makes sense to both of us. I'm going to take this to my business partner. At the end of the day, they're the ones that actually make the final buying decision. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to need about an hour or two and then I'm going to, I'm going to try and call you back. Oh, wait, Hey, real quick, by the way, I see here in my system that you have a mortgage on the property. Is that accurate? Now I do it that way because I'm going to get one or two responses. Typically it takes them off guard. So they think that we're winding down the conversation. Then all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, by the way, Hey, I see here in my system that you have a mortgage on your property. Is that accurate? 
I'm not asking them how much they owe. I just say, is that accurate? And normally I get one of two responses. No, I don't have a mortgage on the property, which means they own it free and clear and they have lots of equity, right? Or yes, I have a mortgage on the property and I just follow up by saying, oh, cool. How much uh, do you currently owe? It doesn't have to be perfect, perfectly accurate, but uh, if you estimate it, about how much do you owe? And I just stop talking. About 80% of the time, they throw out a number because they're so caught off guard, they, their wall hasn't gone up yet. So that's, that's another good piece of information going into the negotiation that I would like to have. And I, I mentioned the other one, which is their why, okay, which is the motivational piece. So once I have this, I can start to... Um, do things like ask them, you know, I could even ask them what repairs are needed on the house. That did not come out right at all. A-I-R-S? Yep. Pretty good. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, um, so I can ask them what repairs are needed, so that way I can help with me estimating repairs. And I'm going to give you a couple rules of thumb, and then we're going to go over this formula. I want to talk about closing costs real quick. If you're brand new, you probably don't really understand what closing costs are. But closing costs, okay, can be broken down into a couple pieces. So one piece could be realtor fees, and the other piece can be uh, actual closing costs. Okay, and these are the fees charged by the title company or uh, 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 wherever, where, maybe it's at a uh, lawyer's office, wherever you're actually closing, a lot of times they, they charge you certain fees, certain closing costs. So normally a realtor charges 3% for the listing agent and 3% for the selling agent, or the buyer's agent, I mean. So you normally have about 6%. Now every market's a little different, but on average it's 3% for the listing agent, 3% for the buying agent. Closing costs are somewhere around estimated 2% of the final sales price. So if you lean in on closing cost anywhere between eight to 9%, that's gonna be a pretty reasonable rule of thumb to estimate closing costs. Now with that said, I want to go through the formula. So maximum allowable offer equals ARV, which stands for um, after repaired value. If I was to do research in uh, a specific area and I'm looking at all the different comps, all the different sales that have occurred in the last, say, 90 days in this particular area, what are the similar houses selling for that are in great condition? Okay, and that's the after repaired value. Those are the ones that rehabbers have already rehabbed, put up, uh, uh, listed them for sale, and sold them recently. It's good to do this research, and a lot of times if you don't have uh, really in-depth market knowledge, you're going to want to go to an investor-friendly real estate agent and ask them what they think the ARV is, or the after repaired value, you can also say, will you run me a CMA or a comparative market analysis on this particular address? And they're going to tell you what they think the ARV is. Over time, as you get more knowledgeable about the local market, you're going to be able to quickly run your own comps and tell yourself what the ARV is. But ARV stands for after repaired value times an investor discount. All right, so that's, that's the beginning part of the formula. ARV times an investor discount. Cash is king. I said that earlier. So if you have a bucket of cash and you're looking at all these different investment opportunities, you want to buy it at a discount in order to buy it right so that way you can kind of lock in your profits and guarantee that you're going to make money. Every market's a little different and the discounts that local investors are wanting is different from each market. So I'm from Arizona. So right now the investor discount, because it's a very competitive market, might be 15% to 20% off of retail price. Okay, it can go as low as 5%. Now in a buyer's market where there, I mean, uh, yeah, a buyer's market where 
there are more sellers than buyers, what happens is the ARV or the investor discount grows. So uh, back in the day when the market crashed, we were expecting discounts of 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent off of retail value. Right now, I would say it's going to be somewhere between 10 percent to 25 percent. Okay, 25 percent means that they're they're wanting a 25 percent discount off of ARV. Here in Arizona, it's probably 10 to 15 percent right now. California, it might be 5 percent. Uh, someplace in the Midwest, it might be 20 percent. Uh, but it's going to be somewhere between those numbers right now. So you take your ARV, your after repaired value, and you multiply it by the investor discount. There, you would know what investor discounts are by just looking around and joining all the other wholesale uh, wholesalers lists, their VIP cash buyers lists, and you'll start to see properties coming out from other local wholesalers where they're at a certain discount from retail. And that'll start to give you an idea what investors are demanding in that particular area. So you take your ARV, you times it by your investor discount. Once you have that number, you minus out estimated repairs, because remember, we're looking at it as if we are the back-end cash buyer, and a lot of times that's a rehabber or a landlord that needs to come in and make repairs to the property. So we need to get somewhat decent at estimating repairs. The good news is, as a wholesaler, you don't need to be deadly accurate. All you need to do is get within the ballpark. So if I walk into, if I know the house is about, uh, let's say it's a um, thousand square foot house, right? Uh, it might cost me for a full remodel somewhere right around $25,000 to, to remodel the whole thing. Kitchens might be five grand to eight grand. Bathrooms might be three to five grand. I mean, you can kind of get sit down with a general contractor and just go through a standard thousand to fifteen hundred square foot house and just say hey give me like chunks like what what would the kitchen need to be just to get it up to marketable value what would the bathrooms need to be what is the average of the exterior of the home and you could start to get a gut feeling a lot of times I just use whole numbers so I might say hey this house probably is gonna cost fifteen grand to repair because the kitchen needs redone and two bathrooms need redone and it needs paint and carpet. All right, so we're gonna estimate repairs, minus estimate repairs, minus closing costs, and we're gonna use this general rule of thumb that it's gonna take 3% on the front end, 3% on the back end, and closing costs of about 2%, and then a wholesale fee, and this is what you wanna make. So let's run an example. Let's run an example real quick. All right. So let's say um, there is a $100,000 house, right? It's 100K. We're just going to use whole numbers. And the investor discount in the area is 20%. Okay? Okay. That means this is now 80K minus, let's do estimated repairs of say 8,000. Let's do closing costs of 8,000, okay? Because this is gonna be 8% of this number. And we wanna make 5K. After I have that first phone call or second phone call with the motivated seller and I'm getting ready to transition from fact gathering mode to negotiation mode, this is when I step, I hang up the phone or I step away from the transaction and I, I come over here and I run my MAO formula to give me an idea of what my target is. When I begin the negotiations, what is my target? This, 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 num this amount is not set in stone. It is a guide to help focus me as a negotiator to get to a number that I know I'm gonna make money at. So what is all this? If I was to minus this all out, what are we looking here? 88 minus eight, that's 72, minus eight and five. All right, so this number is now 59,000. 
Did I do that right? I think I did that right. Either way, let's just say the MAO formula spit out 59,000. Somebody's got to have a, a freaking calculator. You're sweating. Greg's sweating behind the camera. He's like, 61. it's 61? No way. Oh! Come on, come on. I'm not good at math, dude. You don't have to. Look, I made tens of millions of dollars as a real estate investor, Greg, and I don't know anything about math or construction, and I don't have a real estate license. It's so good. There's hope for all of us. All right, so, so anyways, 59,000 is the, what the MAO formula says that your target is. So now when I go back and I start negotiating with the seller, I kind of have a guide. If the MAO says 59 and I put in here that I want to make 5K on this wholesale transaction, what am I going to offer the seller when I go back to them in order to get the property at the right price Okay, if this is the maximum offer I can make, where do I want to start the negotiations? Above this number or below this number? Right, below. We want to go below because a negotiation is a give and take, right? Here's the thing, when you, what you learn about negotiating. If you've built good rapport, if you've set up your higher authority correctly, if you Ha come and you are a professional, meaning you've done your market research, you know what you're doing, you sound like a professional, you're not winging it, you don't just show up and you're like negotiating price too early and you're not over talking and you're matching tonality and, and physiology and body language. When you really learn the skills of negotiating, negotiating is really easy. It's just a simple back and forth between you and the seller um, or you and the real estate agent. It's just you, a lot of people fail because they get so nervous because they didn't set it up the right way. So we're going to come into this transaction knowing we want to offer them a little less than 59,000. Let's say we come in and we offer them 51K. Okay. But because we did this pre-research, remember this over here where we knew what they, what they want, what they owe. Okay. Since we know this number going into this, we can already get an idea like, wow, they have enough equity that they could accept a 51K offer if, if they wanted to. Because let's say they only owe 40, okay? Which would give them, a, you know, and, and by the way, the pitch to a seller, and this is why when they have to make a decision, they're saying to themselves, do I wanna go with the real estate agent or do I wanna go with the real estate investor? What is the difference? A real estate agent, right? They're gonna come, they're saying, I'm gonna list your house. I'm gonna try and get you top dollar. I'm gonna hold open houses. I'm gonna market the property. Uh, and then a, a conventional buyer is probably gonna to come to the table. Not, sometimes they'll bring a, a cash buyer, but it could literally be where a mortgage has to, you know, the, the underwriting for a mortgage has to happen and maybe they hold open houses for a few months and the average days on market might be 90 days or 120 days. So going through a real estate agent takes a long time. But if they come, I don't know why I'm pointing at this. This, 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 this has nothing to do with the real estate agent. Uh, uh, if they go with an investor, on the other hand, what's going to happen is they get paid cash. They can close on a date of their choice. And the number that we offer them is a net number to the seller meaning whatever liens or encumbrances they have on the property, those get paid off and whatever's remaining goes right into the seller's pocket. So if the seller owes $40,000 to a bank, okay, and we offered them 51 cash and they took it, okay, they would have 11K left over that would go right in their pocket, all right? But with the real estate agent, there would be commissions, okay, closing costs. With an investor, since it's a net number to them, we pay the closing costs on the acquisition. If they go with a real estate agent, they have to pay their own closing costs. There's, you know, it might be, uh, you know, it might take them 90 to 120 days to get the money. 
with us, they might get it in 10 to 15 days. Get what I'm saying? So, so there's a lot of benefits of going with a, a, a real estate investor. And that's, that's the whole pitch. So we already know what they want. We know what they owe. We can kind of get a gauge. Like if they owed 65,000 on this example, they're not going to take 59 or even 51. They, they, they owe a certain amount. So we're going to kind of get a gauge of what they owe and maybe go in there. Maybe we just say, listen, I could pay off your mortgage, but that's all I can do on this property. Because I can't tell you how many times as a wholesaler, I went and locked up a house where my MAO said 59,000, but I locked it up for 65K and I still sold it for 70K. And I made a 5K spread between the two. So this is a guide, this isn't set in stone. And I really want you guys to understand that. But as a new investor, having this formula can guide you to that place where you're like, okay, I kind of know where, where to go in. I have a lot of the pieces to go into this negotiation like a professional. Now I share this with you um, because I remember being in your shoes. And uh, uh, I've been at this business for 13 years now. I've been at every level of success. So I remember that day where I was like, God, I was working as a bookkeeper. I hated my job. I waited for an hour and a half in traffic uh, on the way to work and on the way home every single day. Sat at a cubicle, had a boss that didn't like me and I didn't like him. You know, all the typical stuff that you hear people complain about. And I remember dreaming like, man, someday I'm going to do real estate. And if I could just get this wholesaling business off the ground and quick flip some houses, if I could just get to a place where I was making $4,000 a month, I would be able to quit my job, tell my boss, sayonara, quit my job. And, and, and I literally thought this was going to be the greatest life. I could be an entrepreneur. I can work for myself. I control my own time, control my own destiny. So I've been there being negative money, finally getting to $4,000 a month consistently, finally getting to where you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month to millions of dollars a year, to tens of millions of dollars a year, to building enough assets that you never have to work another day in your life. When you finally get there and you go through all these different evolutions, you learn that uh, you are gonna develop certain habits, certain capabilities that are gonna keep launching you to the next level. And a lot of times it's a fateful thing like watching a YouTube video or a Facebook video. It's getting involved in a community of like-minded people that all lock arms with each other and support each other. And I know there's a lot of educators out there. There's a lot of places you can go to learn this stuff. I want you to come to Clever Investor and be part of this community because I know there's strength in numbers and I know together we're all gonna be able to make a lot more money. And, the, and I get this high. Every time I do a real estate deal, I get this high. Like it's like the greatest thing to, to cash checks. And a lot of you guys have probably even seen me on my, on my ads and things where I'm going around and I'm standing in front of the bank and I got million dollar checks and $10,000 checks and $50,000 checks, hundreds and hundreds of them. And uh, I, you know, I'm standing in front of my Lamborghini or my big house and all that stuff. Now I do that to get people excited to come into this community because I know once they're in, they're gonna love it. It's gonna be life changing, they're gonna love it. And uh, as a gift to you, I wanna, I wanna uh, give you an ethical bribe right now to get involved. You don't have to pay for anything. This is absolutely free. This is my gift to you. I wrote a book, it's an Amazon bestseller. I'm very proud of this book. This documents and details every single thing that we just went over and a ton more. And uh, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> it's pretty funny, right? I know, yeah, we just need lights on it. You know, it's like rotating. Um, uh, I wanna give you the book absolutely free. This isn't something where you gotta pay shipping and handling or any of that stuff. Okay, I wanna give you the digital version of this book. All right, so that way you can get it instantly and you can start reading it right away. All you have to do is go to fliphousesbook.com uh, or click the link that you see on your screen. I'm sure we're gonna have a link somewhere. Fliphousesbook.com and download the book. Read it, it's a fast read. I wrote every single word. I know a lot of authors that say that they wrote a book, but somebody else wrote the dang book. I wrote this book and you're gonna know that I wrote this book because it, it's gonna teach you a lot the same way that I taught you in this. 
um, but probably even better because I took my time and I've systematized everything and I've documented everything that's been working for me. The things that work, the things that sucked, the things I lost money on, the lessons I've learned, I wrote them down in this book and I want to give it to you. So uh, go to fliphousesbook.com and you're going to get a free training that comes along with it. It's, it's uh, a, a class that I recorded, I put together for you. It's going to show you how to implement the strategies that are in this book so you can actually do some real damage. And who knows, maybe in the near future, you'll, you're going to be sending me a testimonial or a check picture of you in front of the bank with your fancy Lamborghini and your big house in the background or whatever, uh, saying, man, I remember the day that I watched that crazy guy do the Mao formula, and uh, my life has never been the same since. So I hope that's the case. I know it will be if you take action on it. It's, it's uh, the, the thing that I love most about our community is it's not wrapped just around Cody Sperber. Everybody that's in the community is a clever investor. You're a clever investor. From the day you get involved with us, you become a clever investor. And it starts by downloading the book, getting involved, taking action. With that said, I hope you learned something from this. Uh, I know this one ran a little bit long, but I, I, I wanted to share. It's one of the biggest questions we get all the time. It's, Cody, how do you look at these deals so when you go in and you negotiate like a boss and you lock your profits in on, on the front end, this is how I do it. With that said, I don't have anything else to say. Go to fliphousesbook.com. Grab it right now today. Till next time, I'm Cody Sperber, Clever Investor, signing off. Take care. Comb your hair. Sperber out.